In this video, we'll take a look at the slopes of parallel lines and the slopes of perpendicular lines. Let's start with parallel lines. What does it mean for two lines to be parallel? Well, essentially, it means they go in the same direction. And looking at parallel lines on a graph, it appears that they have the same amount of slant. But what does that say about their actual slope values? Well, let's investigate using these two lines that we have here. For the bottom line, we can easily find the slope by doing the rise divided by the run for any two points on the line. So I'll pick a couple of points that I can easily read off of this graph, perhaps that one and that one. And that gives me a run of three and a rise of two. So the slope is two over three or two thirds. And what about the other line, which is parallel? Well, again, we'll pick a couple of points that we can easily read. This gives us again a run of three here and a rise of two. So the slope of this line is also two thirds. Are you surprised? Hopefully not. In order for two lines to be parallel, they actually have to have the same slope. Now, why is that? Well, for the bottom line, every time we move over three, we move up two to get to another point on the line. And that kind of dictates the direction of that line. Well, for the top line, if we move over three and we want the result to be a line that's parallel to the bottom line, we have to move up by two again. If we move up or down by any other value, that line will have a different amount of slant and it will not be parallel. So we can safely say that parallel lines always have the same slope. And what about perpendicular lines? We'll take a look at the graph on the right side of the screen. What would a perpendicular line look like here? Oh, it would look like that. And one way that we could get that perpendicular line is to think of rotating the original blue line 90 degrees, because perpendicular really means at 90 degrees. So notice if we rotate that blue line 90 degrees, we get that red line. What does that say about the slope values? Well, let's take a look at the rise and the run for our original line. Uh, that is our, our blue line here. Looks like we have a run of five and a rise of three. So the slope would be three fifths. Now we said to get a perpendicular line, we can just rotate that line 90 degrees. Well, doing so would also rotate that rise and run triangle. Take a look. Notice what happened to the rise and run values. When we rotate, what used to be the run is now actually the rise. And what used to be the rise is now the run. Now it's very important that we notice too, the sign of our slope has changed. Our original blue line rose from left to right. It went upward from left to right, so it has a positive slope. When we rotate that 90 degrees, we'll end up with a line that decreases or goes down from left to right. So that will have a negative slope. So what really happened here? Well, for our original line, the slope changed sign. It went from positive to negative. And furthermore, the run became the rise and the rise became the run. So the slope of this red line would actually be what we call the negative reciprocal of the slope for the blue line. Okay, we need to change the sign and we need to flip the rise and the run. That is, we flip the fraction for slope. Okay, so we'll see that one more time here. All right, now that doesn't happen just for these lines here. That will happen for any line. So if I draw perhaps a line that has a negative slope here, perhaps uh, this one here, that has a slope of negative two thirds. Perpendicular line, no problem. Rotate that 90 degrees. Notice that our rise became our run and our run became our rise. And we switched the sign for our slope as well. So our original slope of negative two thirds became a slope of positive three halves for our perpendicular line. So therefore we can say that perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. And that's it.